What are reverse rotor fans? You might be asking yourself the question if you're looking at building a new PC and you're considering Corsair fans. Reverse rotor is basically interchangeable with reverse blade. Corsair has a couple of different variants of reverse rotor fans like the LX120R and the RS120R ARGB. These are the non-IQ link fans and these are the IQ link variants of the fans. Now you notice they're denoted with the R the LX120R is what you've got to pay attention to because this is the standard LX120, for example, and it's the R that stands for the reverse rotor. And the idea here is quite simple, but I thought I'd explain it to you and show parts of it, what it looks like in the build, so you can get a working idea of what it means. So here we have a reverse rotor fan. What you'll notice is when we put it alongside a standard fan, you can see, if you look carefully, that the direction of the fan blades is different. So it actually has a different curve to it and a different angle. And the idea here is basically to help with airflow and change the direction of the airflow. So with a standard fan, if we have a look at a standard fan that you can see here, this is an LX120 fan, but the logic will be the same with the RS fans and the RS reverse blade fans as well. This fan, when you see the front of it, and this is the same with most modern fans, this will pull air through and then it comes out of the back. So when you can see the back, that's where the air is coming through into the case. So generally speaking, for example, you'd have this fan mounted to the front of your case. So if you imagine the front is here, the front of the fan goes like this towards it. That way air is being pulled in through the front of the case and it's then blowing out the back and onto your components like your GPU and your CPU and your motherboard and other things. If you want to have an intake fan like this set up in your case on the side, for example, you need to make sure that when you look inside the case, you see the back of the fan and that way the air is being pulled through the side panel and then into the case like that. And the same logic applies for the bottom of the case. If you're putting it on the bottom of your case, you may mount it so that the blade faces downwards and then the back of the fan is visible in the case and the air is going upwards. So the idea with the reverse rotor fan is the opposite. So this is designed to go inside the case and on the side of the case or on the bottom of the case, but with the blade facing inwards. So the blade and the nice RGB accents around the outside of the ring or whatever else is basically facing in towards the case and is visible when you look inside it. So if you're looking into the case, you'll see it there instead of seeing the back. So you no longer have to look at the bracketing and the wiring and the nasty back. You get to see the front of the fan instead, so it looks nicer. Basically, it's all about aesthetics. It's designed to look better, look nicer in the case, and make your build look prettier. The compromise here is that the fan power is not as good. So the cooling potential of a reverse blade fan is not as good as a standard fan. And this applies to both the LX120R and the variants of the RS120R, for example. If you have a look at the specs, you'll see that there's a difference in airflow. So the standard LX120, for example, has an airflow of up to 69 CFM, whereas this model, the reverse blade variant, instead goes up to 66 CFM. It also has 4.72 H2O airflow in terms of static pressure, whereas this goes up to 5 0.22. I'll leave those specs in the description so you can see them, but the same logic applies to the RS120 and the RS120R. So although you have better looks in the case, you're sacrificing the performance. Now I actually saw this in person during testing as well, so it's worth noting this because I want to talk about it. In Corsair's Frame 4500X case, you can get that case with either the LX120Rs or the RS120Rs pre-installed for you. They're side mounted on the case as intake fans. So along the side of the case, you've got them there. And then obviously they're designed to pull air into the case. The idea is then that you put a radiator, for example, on the top of a case as exhaust. Then you've got a really easy setup and it looks really nice, which is great on paper. But the performance of that system versus the Frame 4000D, which if you put fans into it instead, with standard blade fans wasn't as good and I noted that immediately and the testing that I did in that review showed that the performance wasn't as good so you are sacrificing the performance which means that the temperature of your components might be hotter now it will only be marginal by a few degrees C that that makes a difference to it 
And so you have to work out whether you want to make that sacrifice. Would you rather see the front of a fan looking nice in the case, but suffer in terms of the cooling performance, or would you rather see the back and have better cooling? So it's really a question of that, essentially. It's pretty straightforward otherwise, because it's basically similar sort of wiring logic. It just makes the case look a lot nicer. With that in mind, let's take a quick look at these side by side so you can see things a little bit more clearly with the LX120 reverse rotor fans on the right. And you can see the specs difference of the fans here. And you'll notice how significant it is. So you are sacrificing that performance potentially. I'll get to more of that in a second. But you'll also see a close up look at just how different the blade shape is. So it is quite easy to recognize the reverse rotors versus the standard blades once you get them side by side. And you can see the airflow difference for the reverse rotor RS120 fans as well. The wiring logic is the same though. So in both variations of this fan, the wires are set up in the same way. So with IQ Link, you can still connect them to the same controller. And with the RS120 fans, they can still be connected together, daisy chained together, and then connected to the motherboard. So you don't need to worry about that because of the reverse rotors. It doesn't make any difference to the wiring, so it makes it fairly straightforward. Now, what I wanted to do quickly was to show you what the RS120Rs look like in the Frame 4500X. So here I've got the standard RS120 fans mounted face down at the bottom of the case, obviously set to intake as the standard setup which means you can see the backs. Now I'm going to replace them with the RS120R fans instead. So this is just a case of a straight swapping these out. I'm even keeping the wires connected to the motherboard. So these fans chain together with their connectors and then they have extension cables that run through to the motherboard. So for fan power and RGB connections. So then I'm just swapping those out for the reverse blade RS120 fans. So we're now putting those with the blades facing upwards into the case. And as you can see, immediately this makes things look a lot nicer. We reconnect the cables, link these things together. And now we've got reverse blade fans on the bottom of the case and also on the side mounted on the radiator. So in the review of this case, I showed how you could put them on a radiator perhaps for an all-in-one cooler and therefore still have a good view in the case. Although this will obviously have a negative impact on the CPU cooling potentially. But in my testing, it's still better to do this than top mount as exhaust because you've got fresh air blowing over the radiator, cooling the liquid inside, which in turn makes the CPU cooler. So here you can see the end result of what it looks like when you use reverse blade in the case. So the bottom and side fans are reverse blade, then the top and rear fan are your standard blades. And that's what the setup would look like. And this is how you would end up improving your case visually. At Hope this has helped. And now you have a clear understanding of what's what. Check out the links in the description to find out more and watch related content. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.